a life director for Knights of Columbus as well as a family director. I'm also an auxiliary member of the Legion of Mary. So I came across this video from Father Chris that talks about some really important issues. Life and death issues, as a matter of fact. Um, it talks about how important children are. He talks about, you know, a, a number of uh, issues, including how important this is. This is a moral issue, and it's not a political issue. According to um, Father Chris, this is the biggest moral issue of our times. And I would agree with him 100%. And our Catholic Church does um, teach us in Catechisms of the Catholic Church 2246, that this is an obligation uh, for us. It's, it's not a choice. It's an obligation for us to get involved in politics when it comes to moral issues. Let's take a few minutes. We're not going to cover the entire video, but we'll take a few minutes to cover uh, some of these really important issues from Father Chris, and then we'll summarize it at the end. That's why our church teaches that we are to be charitable, because nothing is really ours. Everything was a gift from God, tangible, intangible, money, intelligence, whatever it is, it's a gift. It is not ours. It was given by God. And probably the biggest one is children. Children are a gift. We are stewards. This passage is about being a good steward with what God gives you. And what the steward wasn't was a good steward. He didn't utilize the gift that God gave him as gift. And that's why I think it's important that we see that, especially with children. Yesterday, I had the honor of interviewing Archbishop Cordy Leone from San Francisco. He'll be with us on the EWTN show. Um, what an amazing shepherd of the church. Uh, I cannot say enough of that is the kind of bishop that I, as a priest, my my devotion, I would, I would go to war with him any day. Uh, this is who he was, you know, and, and he brought up the point about my body, my choice, and he actually said in the interview how ironic that forced vaccinations, which really are just your body, you had no choice, you had no freedom. But yet, taking an abortion is not your body, but you're supposed to have that freedom. I thought that was very unique, which the Archbishop said. And we talked a little bit more, and he said, you know, we, we talked about this, this is a political issue. He says, this is a moral issue. It's not a political issue, it's a moral issue. And therefore, because I said, do you get criticized, Archbishop, for bringing in politics? He says, it's not a political issue, it's a moral issue. We must do the works of mercy, admonish the sinner. You know, the church, our Catholic church, says that we Catholics have the obligation, not we should, we have the obligation to be involved in politics regarding moral issues. This is right in the Catechism. You can look it up, 2246. It is part of the church's mission, quote, to pass moral judgments even in matters related to politics whenever the fundamental rights of man or the salvation of souls requires it. This is why we do what we do as Catholics in defense of life. This is why we must correct wrong information, especially regarding our faith. You know, we as Catholics, as a priest, you will never hear us, the Marian Fathers, supporting a political candidate or a political party. We don't do that, but we must support the truth, whichever side of the aisle it falls on. You know, um, the Catholic bishops here, I'm, our policy at the Marian Fathers is normally not to mention any names, but it was told to me by our superiors in Rome when the church mentions a name, we are able to speak on that because it is fact fact that the church said something. Well, the church's bishops of the United States have finally said something. I don't know if you've heard this news, but the Catholic bishops have now stood up 
and now are calling out names. It's funny because it's ironic that Joe Biden is on a mission to attack misinformation. He says he is a practicing Catholic, but he says nobody knows when life begins. Biden promised to make abortion his top priority in 2023 if his party wins more seats in Congress. And he said, quote, I'm just reading a quote here. I'm not giving political opinion. I'm just reading a quote. I'm a practicing Catholic. I've supported Roe versus Wade. And the reason I support Roe versus Wade is the most rational basis upon which constitutional faith, confessional faiths, sorry, confessional faiths can agree. No one knows when human life begins. This is false. If you're talking about disinformation or misinformation, that's of the greatest kind. The Catholic bishops responded, God bless them. And I'm only repeating what the Catholic bishops have said. The Catholic bishop said the statement is both wrong and troubling for multiple reasons regarding the Catholic faith, scientific knowledge, and basic human rights. Last week, the Catholic, U.S. Catholic bishops condemned Biden's single-minded extremism on abortion after he announced a radical pro-abortion bill as his top priority in 2023. Archbishop William Lorry of Baltimore, a specific bishop, the chair of the Committee on Pro-Life Activities for the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops, said Joe Biden's abortion advocacy is tragic and gravely wrong because babies in the womb are valuable human beings. This is not political. This is not endorsing a political party or a candidate. This is simply giving the truth. Another archbishop, you can look it up, recently described this legislation as child sacrifice, saying it is, quote, that one would expect from a devout Satanist, not a devout Catholic. These are not my words. These are the words of the Catholic bishops. I am allowed to repeat them. I think we ought to listen. The reason, the bishop said, is this person who is so obsessed with misinformation is spouting some of the worst misinformation that you can possibly have. The first true understanding of when human life begins came all the way back from Matthias Jacob Schleiden and Theodore Schwamm back in 1839. They discovered that an embryo develops from a single cell zygote. zygote. They observed that a single cell zygote was alive in an independent human. This led to the American Medical Association in 1859, condemning abortion. Now it's ironic, this same group now firmly and radically supports abortion. What happened? This basic knowledge that human life begins at conception is in textbooks, research papers, scientific magazines, medical websites. Where is this misinformation that nobody knows when life begins? That is misinformation. And the Catholic bishops have called out Mr. Biden by name. I am simply repeating their own words. LifeSite News just published an updated article with 44 quotes from expert sources that confirm a unique individual human life begins at conception. Do you realize that this is probably the biggest moral issue of our times, not political. It affects politics, so therefore we must get involved according to Catechism 2246. And we can make a difference on voting day. Well, Father Chris made a number of really important points there about 
life beginning from conception. He's talked before on a, a number of times about how important it is for us to stand up for life. He's also stated that, you know, the, the right to life is one of those non-negotiable items really in the Catholic Church. He's talked about that before also. Um, so it's, it's very important that we, we do take a moral stance. And I agree with Father Chris 100%. He did a really good job on this. Let's just listen to a couple more minutes, and then we'll do a final summary. Telling you who to vote for. The bishops are telling you what the moral issues are. And I, as a priest, have a moral obligation to do the same. I will stand before God someday, <laughs> who knows when, but I will be morally culpable because I was given the grace of ordination. I was given the grace and the gift of the priesthood. And I will be asked by our Lord, what did I do with that grace? And all I'm able to tell him is I tried, Lord, as hard as I could to teach the flock, to teach your sheep the truth, to teach your sheep what is at stake. And if we listen to the words of Mary, why it is so important that we protect life. Call it political at this point, I don't care anymore. <laughs> I used to come up here and complain about the letters I would get complaining. I don't care anymore. Send them. Because God has given me this mission. And he has given all of you the mission to defend the most innocent. Do you imagine what could happen to our nation? Yes, we had a huge step in the defeat of Roe v. Wade. But as Bishop Cordy Leone said yesterday, we can't stop. Now more than ever, we have to plow forward because now all of these rights of abortion, which we say in parentheses or quotation marks rights, they're not, goes back to the states now. So yes, Roe v. Wade was defeated on the federal level, but all that means doesn't mean abortion is over. It means it goes back to the states. Now the states will be voting, and that's why I brought up Michigan Proposition 3 because now Michigan will be voting. Do we allow human life to be taken or do we protect it? Please pray for Michigan and all the states that are facing this very important call, not a political call, the very core, as what catechism says, part of our mission to pass moral judgment even in matters related to politics, whenever the fundamental rights of man and human life is the most fundamental right, or the salvation of souls requires it. Trust me, the salvation of souls require it. Let us pray for Joe Biden. Let us pray for all those that the bishops mentioned are in grave error. Let us pray for their conversion. Let us love them, not condemn them. I'm not condemning Mr. Biden. I am praying and asking that his heart be open to the Catholic teaching he professes that he practices. I can point to myself. I don't always practice what I profess. I fall. I make mistakes. But I go back to confession, and I beg God's mercy to help me to do it better next time. Let us pray for our politicians that they will do the same. Soften their hearts and allow God's grace and mercy to work in them. And then we'll see the rewards in our nation abundant and blessed. This is all we need to do to get God's blessing upon our country and our world. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together, may our hands gather in unity, may our hearts beat in unison, 
May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. 